Let's bring in our defence and security analyst, Professor Michael Clark. Well, this is very interesting, yeah. isn't it? Differing accounts of the incident, but what do you make of it? Yeah, um, Mark, 29th of September last year, this incident took place. So Britain had a surveillance aircraft somewhere over the Black Sea. We don't know where, but presumably it was probably in the in this western part. It was a river joint, an RC-135 river joint surveillance aircraft. The Russians had two fighter aircraft covering it, which is what you'd expect, and one of the fighter aircrafts released a missile. The one pilot seemed to receive from the ground uh, controller the uh, the phrase you know you have the target and fired a missile now the uh, the Russians said well that was just a malfunction just a mistake and on the 20th of October Ben Wallace in the Commons stood up and said we believe the Russian account and that's fine because that was a way of, of calming the whole thing down what seems to be coming out now is the fact that it was a deliberate firing of a missile and it reflects some interesting things. I mean, these aircraft are much more complicated than, you know, the issue is much more complicated than we might have thought. The River Joint is a surveillance aircraft. I mean, there's a couple of dozen people on board that. Yeah. You know, banks and banks of, of uh, surveillance material, plus the crew. And the, the Su-27, the flankers, as they're known to NATO, are the air defence uh, aircraft. And it looked as if the two pilots were arguing with each other. One pilot was going to fire his missile. The other pilot was swearing at him and telling him not to. He fired his missile, which then they broke the lock on. The, the, the missile seems to be locked on. He couldn't have fired it unless they had a, a firing solution in the cockpit. And so presumably the, the missile was locked on when he fired it. Otherwise, it was just random. And the, the lock was broken now, and it missed. And one would assume it was broken from some sort of... It was jammed by electronic warfare, maybe from the river joint, maybe from another British aircraft that might have been riding shotgun with them. Who knows? We're guessing. Um, and then the second missile fell off this uh, Su-27. So either the, it, it fell off because it genuinely malfunctioned or it fell off because it was about to be fired and aborted. So one missile was fired, the other missile fell off. Um, the river joint was fine. But imagine if that missile had struck the river joint. If we'd lost the surveillance aircraft with 30 people on board... Well, I mean, isn't this just the sort of miscalculation yeah. or mistake, yep. call it what you want, that could lead to a... Absolutely right. ..a, a, a full-scale yeah. war between... Well, I don't know about full-scale war, but a, but, but a major but incident it's... which is which is bad for everybody. It's a tragedy but, for everyone. Yeah. And, and the RAF is the only NATO country that still flies crewed aircraft inside the Black Sea zone. I mean, it's all in international airspace, but other, other allies send drones over. We're the only yeah. country that sends over a, a, an aircraft with air crew on it to, because that does the job better. But, my goodness, it's a dangerous thing to do. But the, the British are content to... They are, and they're protecting them. I mean, not, they, we always do do this, which is why I'd be surprised if we weren't doing it on the 29th of September last yeah. year. Normally, every, every time one of these aircraft takes off, there's a couple of tornadoes, above, a couple of typhoons above it, riding shotgun, keep an eye on it, be able to use their systems to keep it safe. I'd be surprised if that wasn't the case here, but we don't know that. I'm just guessing. Right, and if we get the map back, um, uh, mm. there is um, the Ukrainian striking Russian air defences in Yevpatoria in Crimea. Yevpatoria, yeah. Very interesting that that was a strike this morning on uh, Russian air defences, the S-300 and S-400, big system called the Triumph system uh, there in that particular place, worth over a billion dollars' worth of stuff, and they seem to have lost it all uh, last night. And there's a pattern here. These are not just random yeah. uh, attacks of opportunity. So the Ukrainians took the, uh, the Boyko Towers, which are these uh, in, the, in the Black Sea, these oil and gas platforms. They attacked Sevastopol last week, having got through the air defences the previous week, and they've attacked uh, Yevatoria, uh, today, again, taking down the air defences. What the Ukrainians seem to be doing is taking down the air defences as best they can of, of Western Crimea, because if you take those defences down, that's only temporary. The Russians will replace those air defences. But in the, in the hole you have created, for the number of days you've got some, some holes, then you put something through the holes. So this, it, to me, uh, and I think we mentioned this last night, that, that uh, you know, this means there probably will be more attacks in that area. That's the, you know, there, there's a pattern behind this. Yeah. Taking down the Russian air defences so they can attack deep behind the main lines. This is deep strike, strike on Crimea, so they can't get their stuff forward towards Tokmak, which is where the big battle is about to really begin. Yeah, OK, Michael, thank you very much indeed.